What's good, my name's Martian, I come in peace, and today I've got a rotation proof Teema Draw 2 deck. We're nearing September, which means rotation time, which is always one of the most exciting times for a standard player. And I thought we should start doing some rotation proof decks, and by that I mean obviously cards that aren't going to be rotating. So this deck is completely playable after rotation. I'm sure Zendikar's gonna make it better, especially the mana base. The mana base is probably the worst part of this deck at the moment since we have zero untapped dual lands when the shock lands rotate so hopefully Zendikar gives us something in that department but other than that I think the deck's pretty solid. So obviously draw two mainly focused around the Iron Crag Pyromancer, the Improbable Alliance and the Joel Riel. The Joel Riel being the main reason that we have to go green because it's such a strong draw two payoff. With our questionable mana base, maybe it's better to just go is it, but gotta play that Joel So we're, we're going Teema, and at least we have the Ketria Trium, all four of that. So we've got a lot of tap lands, which I'm not a huge fan of, but no one drop. So hopefully we get a tap land turn one and then can play untapped from there a lot of the time. So yeah, Joel obviously, one of you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 two -two green cat creature token, the Improbable Alliance create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token, and the Iron Crag Pyromancer dealing 3 damage to any target when you draw your second card each turn. So those are our main payoffs. Everything else in the deck mainly focused around triggering these guys over and over and over again. And if you can get even one of these, but if you can get two or three of these on the board at once, you're doing really well. You'll start creating a lot of value and it can be hard to lose from that and it's really nice that the improbable alliance isn't affected by board wipes so yeah you're attacking at different angles you got tokens and then you've got the burn straight to the face but iron crag pyromancer also some great main deck removal if you get two down you can hit things for six so you can take out just about anything with the iron crag pyromancer it's an amazing card obviously no power so it can't attack itself but yeah you want to be triggering it as much as possible to be dealing as much damage as possible to any target which is fantastic so some obvious ones like opt but then some less obvious ones we got some random cycling cards they all cycle for one and have very edge case uses so startling development can be used to make some of your tokens 4-4s four which can be great to surprise block some stuff or to win a game out of nowhere with a 4-4 flyer. You're turning one of your 1-1 one, one flyers into a 4-4. But just the cycle for one's great. So basically playing these instead of cards like Crash Through, which are draw a card for one. But the upside of that is just giving you Trample, which I guess could be alright with Euro. Or alright when you activate Joel Riel's Mana Sync ability. But I think having these upside is better. So startling development, as I said, go for blood, giving you a fight spell. Mostly going to be cycling it for one. So yeah, obviously during your turn, you draw your card for turn. So that's already one. You cycle these for one mana and that's your second card. So you can, if you're on four mana, you can play the Pyromancer itself, cycle for one. So that's why the one mana draw is so great. And then during your opponent's turn, maybe you've got an opt and a cycle card. So you can draw two during the, their turn as well to trigger all your cards once again. Triggering the cards during your opponent's turn is important as well. That's why we have things like Thriller Possibility. Two mana, draw two cards. You obviously have to discard a card, so no card advantage in this one. But at least it's card selection. You can get rid of a land you don't need or get rid of that second Joriel because it's a legendary. Things like that. But yeah, triggering these guys during your opponent's turn. Just awesome value. The Royal Scions, not going to help you trigger them in your opponent's turn. But every turn of yours, you can guarantee that you'll trigger your draw twos with that plus one. And I mean, if you're building an army of tokens, some in the air, some on the ground, you're going to be able to block and reach that ultimate pretty easily. And that ultimate, obviously very strong, draw four cards, deal damage to any target equal to the number of cards in your hand. Yeah, that's pretty good to me. And the four euro, we're not heaps focused on the ramp. We do have a couple ramp payoffs that I'll get to in a bit. Euro mainly here for that draw the second card of each turn. Also gains you some incidental life and Obviously the escape going to be good later in the game too. You're just an insane card. And I figured since we're we're ramping, this is the only card ramping us, we may as well have some big boys. So Godzilla, Doom Inevitable, Yadaru, Wandering Monster. Love this dude, love him so much. So this mightn't be completely correct. I love jamming this guy wherever I can. And since it's got the cycle, it is two mana. But so it can count to our cards drawn per turn. Maybe you want to play like Frantic Inventory in this slot instead, but I think this guy doubles as card draw and a ramp payoff. So if you get to that 7 mana, which is going to happen, especially if you're stalling with tokens, ramping with Euro, whatnot, then you've got this 7 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, haste, trample, giant, dinosaur, turtle monster. Um, so yeah, 
I think that's really cool. And obviously, sometimes you'll cycle four of them and get a free one. Not going to happen too often, but yeah, I think it fits the deck really nicely. And Boon of the Wish Giver, another one mana cycle, but also a ramp payoff. We run out of gas, we can draw four. Six mana draw four, not the greatest thing, especially at sorcery speed, but hey, cycle for one, draw four, maybe once every 50 games or something. But yeah, it's just there for, for when we want it. And then the last card in the deck... To fairy master of time gonna trigger your draws every one of your turn but then because you can use its abilities at instant speed it means you're always drawing at least one card in your opponent's turn so all you need is like an opt or one cycle or something and then you've drawn the two cards during your opponent's turn so to fairy really strong in the deck just the two of because it is a four mana legendary planeswalker maybe you could bump it up to three but yeah i think this guy's really awesome in the deck so yeah that's rp team of draw two rp standing for rotation proof because it doesn't let you fit that in the title um but yeah every single one of these cards gonna be here after rotation i don't think the deck will be tier one or anything but i think it will be a solid probably tier three tier two deck and i'm sure zendikar is gonna add some sort of tools for the deck as well we're just gonna be playing best of one today we're just gonna be playing unranked actually just because i feel like having no shock lands is a bit of a disadvantage i'd prefer not to play ranked but if you were to have a sideboard here are some options i'd consider fire prophecy deal three to target creature so great removal but then it lets you draw a card as well you have to tuck a card to the bottom but you get to draw a card so you get to activate your draw synergies shredded sails is one because it has cycling destroy artifact or deal four to a creature with flying i probably wouldn't run this but it's an option if the post-rotation meta has some big four toughness flyers or is filled with artifacts, then that's an option. Uh, heroic Intervention, obviously, to protect against board wipes, because we're going to be making a big army of tokens, and the Pyromancer is obviously a creature, so board wipes going to screw you over a bit, so her Heroic Intervention could be a good option. Scoos for Graveyard Hate, Wilt, because it is another cycler, so it can trigger your draws, but also can destroy target artifact or enchantments, so if Cat Alvin's still an issue, um, Jun Food, probably still going to be a deck, I would assume. Um, so probably Trailer Crumbs, Cat Oven, those sort of things. Always going to be some decks with artifacts and enchantments. And yeah, you got the cycle option too. Soul Seer, obviously just three mana, five to Creature or Planeswalker, just some solid removal. Adversary, a good one against, I think Green Stomp is probably going to be pretty good after rotation. So this is great against that as a two mana, two, three Death Toucher, but it can also draw your card if it deals damage, so... Another one that can trigger your draw synergies. And Elder Gargaroth, I think, is just a great sideboard card. Great against Mono Red, which I think will probably be good post-rotation too. They've still got Torbrand, Embercleave, Annex, all of that. And they don't have anything big enough to straight-up kill this thing. So it can block all day, draw your cards to trigger your synergies, or it can gain your life or create 3-3 three, three beasts. Um, so yeah, it's great in certain matchups, not so great in others. That's why it's in the sideboard. So yeah, that's Rotation Proof, Team of Draw 2. If you enjoy, drop a like, consider subscribing, and let's jump into some matches, see how we do. All right, we've got a match here against Truska, and we'll be keeping that for sure. We've got our mana, and we'll drop a Temple Turn 1. Turn 1, Turn 1. And yeah, we don't need another green source, definitely not. Only ever need the one green source in this deck, really. We got a goosey. Opponent's got the Umori. Um, now we have a decision here. What do we get down? The, the Alliance or the Joriel? But I think I'll get the Joriel, making two twos rather than the one ones. Joriel, obviously, the biggest reason to go green in the deck. And at the moment, well, I mean, playing with a post-rotation mana base, that's a bit hard. That is a bit hard. I'll hope, I hope Zendikar gives us some sort of help in the mana base department because we lose the Shocklands, which is a big deal. Now here we could drop an Improbable Alliance to continue setting up. We are versing somewhat of a post-rotation deck ourselves. See, I think we dropped the Improbable Alliance here because dropping the Scions, they're just going to get in at it. Get to get in for one with the Joel, not a big deal, but we'll take it. And we'll hope to draw a land. A land would be great so we can go Alliance and then throw the possibility on their turn and trigger all of these things. But if we don't do the land, we'll probably destroy our Scions. Ouch. So we're versing a straight up Mutate deck and our main board is not well equipped to deal with that. A shocking a breeding pool for another Goosey. Hello Goosey. And again, start getting in. We've got an opt here, so we can opt 
during our turn and then drill a possibility during their turn. Yeah, we don't have the mana to drop another alliance and then up, so that's what we'll do. We'll opt. Uh, may as well take the Fable Passage here, yeah. Crack it. Nice. Crack it for another blue mana. In case we hit that to fairy, we'll need double blue. Sexy, sexy blue mana. Oh, those lands are so good looking. <laughs> and yeah, we just passed the turn. And it's going to be a bit of a race here between us and our opponent. I hope they can't mutate out of control because this thing drains you pretty well the more they mutate. Please no. Oh, oh, oh that's bad. I mean, us sacrificing a creature here isn't too bad. But the mutate train. We just keep, keep ramping. Keep draining our life. Damn, we're getting low. And if they have an auspicious Starix coming, I'm pretty scared of that. Resolve, we'll sacrifice. I mean, I guess we sacrifice this here. So at least we have a blocker in the air. They don't have trample just yet. I don't think they have anything to mutate onto it to give it trample either. So we block. So yeah, the main thing that's going to kill us here is that the draining effect. I'm a bit scared of that. Paradise Druid, that's okay. We will throw the possibility, we'll discard our second Joriel, we won't be needing that. Iron Card Pyromancer. Okay, okay. Another land is nice. We'll probably just get Improbable Alliance and then Royal Scions. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Because Pyromancer, we can't hit anything here. We could hit the Goose, not that that really matters. This thing's just a bit too big. So we'll plus. And we probably just discard the Triome here, don't we? Not going to be needing that. It's a bit late. And lots of triggers there, because it is our second card for the turn. We can get in with everything. We'll hold the Joel back. See, so that is one thing we do need a second green source for. Is that game-winning effect. Although, it's X is the number of cards in your hand, so... They're not, not going to make our creatures too big just yet. And they've added Yumori to their hand, so they've taken the turn off, kind of. Yeah, nothing too threatening. Ooh, so we've got double Pyromancers here, so we are actually able to take this out eventually. So we'll get everything down. Damn, this is, this is a board. Um, our opponent, I said earlier that they were playing a post-rotation deck, but they're not. They have a Paradise Druid, so... That thing definitely will be rotating. Good card, probably going to miss it a little bit. And we'll do some second card shenanigans here. What do we get? Another Joriel, so we drop that. And look at all these triggers. Hit the Goosey. See you later, Goosey. They might tap it to make a food here. Yep, so they make a food. Kill the Goose. And I mean... I guess we just keep getting in. Can only block one, we've got plenty of blockers. Start getting them down little by little. They don't have life links, so safe to just keep attacking in, sack a cat. And yeah, the deck's performing really well here. You can see getting these enchantments and creatures down that drawing two cards is insane. Okay, so they do get a cheap Okay, I don't want them to double mutate. That could be really bad. So we'll sack one of these little guys. Please no more mutation. Okay, it's just Yumori. A big blocker. So, still bad, but... Alright, but next turn we can kill the Chittering Harvester giant mutation pile. So I said main board we didn't have a way to deal with it, but it turns out we got the double Pyromancer, which is just amazing. So we get to plus here, and our Scions have reached ultimate next turn. Uh, we'll drop the temple I suppose. We will hit the Cheatering Harvest twice and our opponent skips it up. Awesome. So that was a great, great display of the deck. <laughs> Even though it was in unranked, I do think that a mutate pile type deck probably is going to be a bit more popular after rotation. So yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Alright, we're going to match you against Heavy Arms and yeah, you're seeing... I mean, it's just a bad draw as well, but 
these drills are going to be less common. If we get a, a good dual land in Zendikar. Um, but I think we still keep it. I think we have to keep it. Temple on turn one. Hopefully we can just scry into a green source. But if not, we've got a pyromancer and we've got some ops. Oh, and there's a Teferi. Nice. Oh! <laughs> okay. We get exactly what we asked for. So we, we have a pretty nice curve here then. If we can hit a second blue source. Oh no. They'll be taking the Teferi there. So that's fine. We can remove this thing with the Pyromancer, hopefully. Joel Riel, our opponent, probably going to be pretty annoyed we just ripped this off the top after seeing our hand. We get him for one with the Freebooter. And pass the turn, that's nice. Um, so, I mean, we can get him for one with the Joel Riel, but what if they have a Black Lens Paragon? That's a risk. So I'm going to get the Pyromancer down. I'm not going to attack. It's unlikely but who knows what they're playing Mardu they didn't play anything on turn 2 res the alarm okay so yeah they would have double blocked Joriel so I'm glad we didn't attack there um I wonder what this could be I was thinking humans Mardu with the cartel oh okay um see you later opponent they didn't draw their lands <laughs> alright we've got a match here against Kudin and that's a solid opening hand I'll keep that we get to go Joel turn 2, Royal Science turn 3, crash through, huh? Interesting. And capture your triumph turn 1 is always what you're after. <clears throat> Hardfire Emulator, okay, so some sort of prowess shenanigans. Drop our beautiful island. Every time I play this thing, <laughs> I wish I got more of those lands from Jumpstart. Just the island, but every time I play it, though, I just admire it for a second. No blocks there, obviously. And a bit scared of a shock here. Right at the stage. Please don't find a shock. Okay, that's okay. Do they not have a third land? Ah, they do. Damn it. I was hoping they wouldn't. So yeah. Mono red prowess shenanigans. Um, so we probably just get the royal scions down here. I mean, we could actually... We can trigger it twice. Yeah, that's probably smarter. So, yeah. We'll actually just opt now. And then we can opt and boon next turn. Don't need any more lands, we've found plenty. Now the ops, we don't have the mana to cast two ops though. But yeah, during that turn we can opt and cycle the boon, as I said, which is nice. Make another kitty cat. So there's the shock, thankfully a turn late. So now we'll we'll get our Joriel trigger before the shock lands. Oh, and we find another Joriel. <laughs> That's pretty lucky. But yeah, this thing giving us insane value, 2 mana for, what, yeah, 5, 6 across 3 bodies. So yeah, you can see how easy it is to just get an insane amount of value out of this card. Fantastic card. Definitely worth going green for it. Oh, main phase light up the stage. That's gotta hurt. And I mean, I think we just take the 4 here, because we could double block, but... I'm gonna take the four. I'm gonna take the four. Um, so we get Joriel down again, and yeah, we may as well get it with this mana. And we've got an opt here. We are a mana short of doubling on their turn. Thrill would have been nice. Do we want the thrill still? I don't think we need it at this stage. Mm, actually, yeah. Next turn we can go Scion's main phase thrill on their turn. So let's hope. Joriel lives. And we'll pass the turn here. We don't have the mana to startling development. That would have been pretty cool. And yeah, they're going to keep this going, but not heaps. I'm not completely threatened by it. I mean, Infuriate is scary. So they're obviously going to be using that. And it makes all of both of these too big to double block. We're taking a heap of damage here, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Should I? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go real low. Nice and low. So this thing gets huge, obviously. Absolutely massive. Bang, bang. Down to four, which is quite low. Quite risky. Okay, they do sack the Heartfire Emulator here. Okay. Going to up, see what we hit. Don't need that. Teferi. Hmm. 
So now we don't have a payoff is an issue. So yeah, it was worth them sacking the hot fire emulator. We could just play the Royal Silence. Yeah, maybe we just play the Royal Silence because Teferi would be nice to get down, but it doesn't let us hold up these two. So I'm going to play the Silence. I'm going to just plus one like this. Yeah, we don't need that. Um, and yeah, this way we can hold up Startling Development to kill the Steamkin. Oh, they've just skipped it up. We are on four. <laughs> I guess they saw that this is going to get to ultimate and they can't stop it. And they must have drawn pretty badly, so <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> Alright, we've got a match here, but that's definitely a mulligan. Yeah, the mana just not going to work there. That's a much better hand. We'll drop a euro. And let's hope our opponent's not too fast here. So we can get the Iron Crag Pyromancer to turn three. Or let's hope we draw into a Joriel or Improbable Alliance. Actually, Improbable Alliance would be bad here because we won't have the mana for it. I take it back. Just draw me out. Please just draw me out. Try him. Okay, that's alright. We'll get the try him down. And it is a fast deck, but hopefully not too fast. And... Okay, so it's, um... Cavalcade. Let's hope they don't have a way to deal with the Iron Krog Pyromancer, and then it can just start taking the dudes out. Please don't have a way to deal with it. I feel like this deck wouldn't have something to deal for, unless it's like a stomp and a shock. Or two shocks or something. Now the Tin Street. Yeah, that is a nice thing about this. Big blocker, at least. Um, ooh, they keep targeting it. Oh, Heart Fire, of course. Okay, the perfect amount. Well, in that case, <laughs> we might be a bit too slow here. Um, we could to Fairy, but what does that really get us? Probably saves us a bit of life. I think we're just Euro. Gain a bit of life, draw a card, not a land, unfortunately. So, we could opt, or we could cycle startling development. May as well opt to scry. And we will fill our graveyard, but I don't think it'll be fast enough. So, we want... Yeah, I guess we want that. Is it going to be too slow, though? No, oh, I guess we want it. We want it. So, at least we can go that, and then on their turn, thrill a possibility. Oh dear, double fervent. Um, yeah. This is not looking good. Four cards in the grave, so still need two more. Thriller Possibility does get us there, but we don't have the mana either. So I think we just drop. Alliance is going to give us one blocker. We don't have much time. <laughs> oh dear. And yeah, we'll just thrill. Thriller Possibility, we need to find a green source or a blue source to get the Euro back. So they attack with everything. They don't have Cavalcade, thankfully, so we're not dead just yet. And we'll Thrill here, discarding Startling Development, I guess? Sure. And we, damn it, Red Mana, the one source of mana we didn't want there. <laughs> so we can block something here. Oh, the Castle Embrith actually will give them lethal, won't it? Because, yeah. That's six, they'd go to ten, so we have to block one of these and live on one. <laughs> yeah, so just GG, just too slow there. Um, yeah, maybe should have mulliganed that hand, but we'd already mulliganed once, so yeah. Can't win them all, and we scoop that up. No winning from there. GG.